be speaking somewhere else um, after, but that was scary. <laughs> it really was. Article 8, Section 1 of the Constitution of Georgia states, the provision of an adequate public education for the citizens shall be the primary obligation of the state of Georgia. Public education for the citizens prior to college or post-secondary level shall be free and shall be provided by taxation. The expense of other public education shall be provided in such a manner and in such an amount that may be provided by law. As most of you know, I'm J.C. Cunningham, and I'm running for State Representative District 175. On November the 6th, voters in Georgia will be asked to vote on a very, very, very uh, important ballot question, which states, shall the Constitution of Georgia amend and allow state or local approval of public charter schools upon the request of local communities? Now, I ask you, uh, why is this amendment necessary when local approved charter schools are already constitutional? Because I just read that to you. It's already constitutional. Because the passage of this amendment has nothing to do with granting local approval. If approved by voters, it will give state officials full legal authority to see, I mean, to create and fully finance with state money local charter schools, even over the protest of local elected school officials. The passage of this amendment, um, House Bill 1162, would authorize the legislature and the governor to establish a private committee with the power to approve applications for charter schools, thus taking the power and decisions making from uh, local school systems. I am opposed to this amendment because it is designed to overturn the Georgia Supreme Court decision which ruled that the power to create charter schools belongs to local school boards, not the state. I am also opposed to this amendment because taxpayer dollars, and I repeat, taxpayer dollars should never fund for private, for profit, private, for profit, charter or special schools. The proposed, the proposed amendment is about who creates and controls our schools. Our local school boards, which answer only the parents and taxpayers, now control where the charter schools are created. That's called accountability. It's called good common sense. Those who live and pay taxes in their communities know best what our kids need in our communities, not the bureaucrats in Atlanta. A, a systems of checks and balances is already in place to ensure the needs of all of our students are met. The proposed constitutional amendment would get rid of that accountability. State controlled charter schools will cost an additional $430 million in state funds. Now, Georgia has already cut nearly $5.6 billion from our education over the last nine years. Passage of this amendment would require a shift in funding that would result in larger class sizes, shorter school days, more teacher furloughs, layoffs, and worse, more local taxes uh, to each one of us so that we can supplement that loss. Now I want to give you five reasons why all Georgians should vote against this amendment. One, because out-of-state corporations are paying for this campaign. That's the first one. It creates a new Atlanta-based government bureaucracy. Three, the new commission will be filled by appointed uh, uh, appointments done by politicians, um, not, not the citizens. Georgia already has 200 uh, charter schools and we, we've already proven that the appeal process works. And five, a yes vote would, as I said earlier, cost us an additional $430 million while most of our schools came into work a full year as it is, which right now is 180 days. Currently, the average in Georgia is right at 171 days. There are three school systems in Georgia that are only doing 160 days. So uh, that's a lot of curriculum that our, that our students are, are losing. 
The only reasoning uh, that I can tell you uh, that proponents have been given us is school choice. And again, they already have school choice. We have school choice. The only new things about Amendment 1 is higher cost and unnecessary state bureaucracy. We don't need to change our constitution so out-of-state charter corporations can make profit on our students. I believe, and, I, and I've been saying from the very beginning, you must follow the money. Sound like the movie told us. I think if we follow the money, we'll get to the root of this. So, so let's follow the money a little bit. Check out the groups promoting charter uh, schools and high stake testing and policies that link teacher evaluations to test scores. In particular, who's on the board of education reform? Why are huge interests in Wall Street and hedge funds uh, managers and big real estate uh, uh, moguls, what are they doing in charter schools? Well, what are their connections between um, uh, education reform, uh, stand for the children, uh, uh, CAN, a uh, host of other groups uh, promoting privatization? Um, what, what are they doing? Also, new school venture fund and the big foundations like you know uh, Bill Gates and the Walton. Since, and, and, and another interesting thing I was reading about this morning, there's not another high performing nation in the United States that's even proposing anything uh, uh, this ridiculous. Uh, and that should tell us something, something right there. When you follow the money, I mean, follow the money taken by corporate interests that controls our local politicians, they control our legislatures, and then most of all, they control our governor. Policymakers pushing charter school um, expansion ask taxpayers to overlook the business side, but they don't give us a good reasoning on how we're going to compensate for that money to spend in our classrooms. Now, I know you only told me five minutes, but if, if you would just indulge me just two more minutes. Um, if some of you may have already read this, but every time I, I read um, uh, this statement done by uh, the state school superintendent, uh, Dr. John Barge, I just feel inspired. Uh, one, I feel inspired because one, he's a, he's, a, he's a Republican, and when he made that statement, he knew it put his political career at risk, especially with uh, the, the, the Republican-controlled uh, legislature. But I, I, have, I have a great amount of respect for him, and I want to just read something that he said in his. We had to take his website down uh, because they said it was a, un, uh, that was unused or improper use. So he started his own uh, website, uh, his own blog. And I just want to read this to you. He says, "I fully support the continued creation of high-quality charter schools for Georgia students, but after care, careful consideration and what is best for all Georgia students." I have decided to take a position in opposition to the constitutional amendment that will be on the November 6th ballot. Until all of our public school students are in school a full 180 days, until essential services like student transportation and student support can return to effective levels, and until teachers regain jobs with full pay for a full year, we should not direct or redirect one more dollar away from Georgia local school districts much less an additional $430 million in state funds, which is what it would cost to add seven new charter schools per year over the next five years. And he has in parentheses that uh, the annual average of, a, uh, of the charter school commission that would be, uh, would be revived if the, the amendment passes. Now, what, 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 we're, what we were talking about in the conference call last, uh, last week was that uh, those numbers, because uh, because of the population, we don't. Those numbers can can definitely adjust. And what and what what the, uh, our legislature did that we have not talked about a lot is they actually passed a funding mechanism before we passed uh, the actual charter school amendment. That's on House Bill Seven Nine Seven. But that but it, but it's only gonna it, the only way you can really calculate those numbers until we can actually get the, the amendment passed or defeated. Oh well. So you, you, that's why we, we have to go back to revisit that, that, that data. Um, 
I cannot support the creation of a new and costly state bureaucracy that takes more bureaucracy, I'm sorry, that takes away local control of schools and unnecessarily duplicates the good work already being done by local districts, the Georgia Department of Education, and the State Board of Education. What's more, this constitutional amendment would direct taxpayer dollars into the pockets of out-of-state, for-profit charter school companies whose schools perform no better than traditional public schools and locally approved charter schools, and worse in some cases. I trust our school districts will continue to approve, to approve only high-quality charter schools for Georgia students. I am committed to working with all school districts to ensure that high-quality applicants are not being denied locally, including mediating between high-quality charter school applications and any local districts that are reluctant to approve them. I think it just took a lot of courage to, for him to, uh, to come forward for the, the betterment of the, of the citizens of, um, of the state of Georgia. And I will tell you that um, right now, um, Grady County on the other side of Thomasville, they're going through the charter school, uh, um, the actual public charter school it's going really well. They've gone, and it looks like about six of their schools are going to go to charter. Um, you know, Cartersville, Georgia, uh, they have a, a charter system, public charter system, not a for-profit, but a, a, for, a for-charter. Matter of fact, their high school um, is actually a charter school. You know, I, I do believe that when, when a community comes together and it's done for the purpose of the community, that charter schools uh, could, could benefit. But I think we have to be honest about why we're looking at charter schools. If we, if, you know, if, if, if we have a, a group of, of children that, that aren't getting the things that they need, and then let's, say, let's just say, since we're right at Moody Air Force Base, they're really into uh, uh, aeronautical engineering, and, they, and, and you, want, you want to devise a school that, that can facilitate that type of learning or that type of curriculum, then I think it's one of the greatest things in the world, as long as it's funded locally as long as it's still controlled and they're still controlled about how many days they're gonna be in school. You're gonna ensure that the teachers that's performing these tasks are certified uh, teachers. Now, I went on a website the other day and uh, there's a, about four or five charter school websites looking for teachers and not one of them asked about a degree. There wasn't anything about a degree at all. They were just asking, well, did you have a background in this area? Now, you know, we can't, we can't allow that. We can't allow for folks that have worked uh, for four, sometimes six, eight years to get degrees uh, and they have specialties to now lose their jobs and lose their health insurance because uh, you don't allow a for-profit corporation that let anybody walk off the street in New York. Matter of fact, they just fired a guy from a charter school. Um, I think I sent it to Stephanie because uh, he was a pedophile. He was a sex offender and he had no college degree either. But we can't, but, but the, they don't worry, they're not, not their concern. Their concern is about profit. And anytime you have large corporations that, that, are, that, are, that are trying to get involved in, in our schools, we need to be very worried, especially private. We have, and what's really ironic is, uh, uh, you know, I keep hearing whenever I go to the legislature, they're saying that we, that we want to keep government. You know, we want to keep government small, but all we're doing is increasing it. So I thank you for allowing me um, Again, I'm sorry I won't be able to hear everyone speak, and uh, I hope everyone get out and vote on November the 6th.